Hi guys, I'm Akash Rauth and welcome to Akash Biology. In today's lectures, we're dealing about what the digestive system of frog, which is the most demanded topic on our YouTube channels. So the digestive system is composed of the organs that is concerned with the process of digestion. And what actually is the digestion? So digestion is a process in which the complex, complex food that we ingest is being digested into what the simpler parts what the simpler parts and the simpler parts is mainly used for what the absorptions for performing the daily activities whereas the rest of the parts is being used sorry the rest of the parts is being what defecated what defecated now so this is the what the process of digestion the simpler view now the digestive system is composed of various types of organs what various types of organs so what are those organs that is concerned with the digestion in the case of frog so they are being listed as first of all the mouth that is often known as oral aperture second one is the what the buccal cavity and the pharynx are being joined or they are being fused to form buccopharyngeal cavity buccopharyngeal cavity third part is the what esophagus esophagus fourth one is the stomach fifth one is stomach then intestine and then sixth is the cloaca so in this video we will be discussing the anatomy of these parts so first of all coming on to the mouth what the mouth so the mouth has an opening that is known as what oral aperture what oral apertures so let us consider this is the mouth of a frog so if we open it so this will form the roof and this will form the floor of the mouth so let us make a figure of the frog mouth so this is the what the just a raw figure of the frog mouth so this can be elaborated as an angle of what angle of mouth angle of mouth now the frog has with this what are oral apertures and the frog has got the teeth only in the upper jaw not in the lower jaw so that we will be making the figure so in the upper jaw there is what the teeth so this is what the teeth so upper jaw only contains teeth this is what upper jaw so this is what upper jaw upper jaw contains two sets of teeth so first of all this teeth so there is what which of the bone that is what the maxilla bones what maxilla so this teeth is known as what maxillary teeth what maxillary teeth maxillary teeth there are there is another set of teeth as well so this teeth is what by backwardly directed like this as a dagger as a what a arabian dagger so these are pointly directed towards the backward now there is another set of teeth that is what a bit conical shaped what conical shaped this is known as what boomerang teeth what boomerang teeth so what we can see the upper jaw contains two teeth two sets of teeth first of all the maxillary second one is the boomerang teeth and the both of these these teeth do not have the function of either cutting or mastication or anything these teeth has only the function of holding the prey what holding the prey holding the prey so these both the teeth are being confined with these only two functions and there is no presence of lips or the cheeks in the case of frog so there are no lips now the upper jaw is not movable what not movable not movable whereas the lower jaw is movable what lower jaw is movable now coming on to another thing as this is what the vomerine teeth and maxillary teeth so here are three what depressions or three fossa over here just between the oral aperture outer part of the oral aperture and between the maxillary teeth and this segment of maxillary teeth is known as what premaxillary area what premaxillary area and these are what three fossa what three fossa and these three fossa helps in breathing while the mouth is being closed so these fossa are known as what subrostral fossa what subrostral fossa subrostral fossa subrostral fossa 
so these are three fossa so middle one is known as median subrostral fossa and there are two lateral ones that is known as lateral subrostral fossa and these three fossa helps in the breathing while the mouth is being closed now in the lower teeth or in the lower part of the floor of the mouth so as there are what three fossa so there must be three elevations over here so there is a tight gapping so let us see an example if there is three fossa like this so must need three elevations for the tightening of the mouth so at the same time the lower segment of the lip has got three elevations what three elevations so these are known as what elevations are known as what tubercle so they are what prelingual tubercle what prelingual tubercle that is present on the lower jaw now after that all the teeth are not present inside the sockets so there are what two teeth so these teeth are not present inside the socket what they are directly attached to the bones so when a teeth is directly attached to the bones then what is the designation so name that we give is acrodont teeth what acrodont that in the presence of absence or presence of sockets there is absence of sockets because teeth are directly being attached to the bones similarly the all the teeth are similar over here so when the all the teeth are similar that is known as what homodont homodont or isodont isodont similarly the teeth will erupt throughout the life not like us the, it, once the teeth permanent teeth is being broken it will not be erupted throughout the life but in the case of frog even if the teeth is be broken it will erupt again and again so that's on the basis of eruption it is what polyphyodont what polyphyodont so what we can see if well, mcq is being asked in the exam which of the following sets of teeth are present in the frog so we can tick out this acrodont homodont and polyphyodont so acrodont on the basis of sockets homodont means on the basis of similarity of teeth and polyphyodont means on the basis of the evolution of the eruption of teeth now another thing on the what on the upper part of the mouth on the roof of the mouth we can see over here the two internal nares what two internal nares internal nares so what is the function of this internal nares so this internal nares helps in the respiration process and we when we are being asked which of the following teeth has got relation with the internal nares it is none other than what the vomerian teeth because vomerian teeth is present just adjacent to the internal nares <clears throat> and we have been illustrated that is not to help in biting biting or cutting or anything just to help the prey now coming on to the teeth the teeth has the same what three regions that is what it is directly attached to the maxilla bones so upper one is the what enamel enamel is composed of ameloblast cell ameloblast cell that is ectodermal in origin second one is the dentine that is composed of what odontoblast cell odontoblast cell and inner one is the pulp cavity in which the blood vessel connective tissue and various nerves are being present now we will be dealing another thing that is what the prelingual tubercle now on the just adjacent to the what we can see on the tongue what the tongue so what we can see the tongue is bifid in nature what the teeth the tongue is fixed at the interior of the mouth not like as our tongue is being fixed it posterior not anteriorly but in the case of frog it is just opposite the tongue is fixed over here why because the frog do not has got the free grasping type of limbs like us so they have to use their tongue to what drag the prey so they dart out like that so if it is being fixed like this so let us say this is the mouth of the frog and the tongue is fixed like this so it can dart out like this and the maximum distance can be achieved that's why the tongue of the frog is attached or immovable at the anterior end and it is free posteriorly so here it is fixed the rear end is what free and what we can see is a bifid nature what bifid nature means there is what two form the two elevations like this two elevations like this so it is a pinkish structure bifid in nature and it secretes mucus what it secretes mucus and it opens suddenly when a prey is being detected 
now there are various things that you need to know through with, with, with through the help of which type of muscle the tongue is being darted out or it is being retracted inside so it is due to the function of which muscle hypoglossal muscle what hypoglossal muscle so hypoglossal muscle is a unique muscles so when it is being protracted means when it goes out that is known as what protractor function protractor function and when it is been retracted means the retracted function of hypoglossal muscles and the hypoglossal muscle is being attached to which of the bone that is the posterior cornea of hyoid bone so here is what hyoid bone that is a uh, not a social bone because it is not attached to any other bones so the hypoglossal muscle is attached to posterior cornea of hyoid hyoid bone so you must remember like this so there is also a relation of pressure over here so when the so with through which force the tongue is been retracted so there is what a sublingual sinus what sublingual sinus sub lingual sinus that is present in the floor of the tongue and when the pressure in the lingual sinus is being increased then the what tongue is being darted out because the pressure always flows from what high to low so whenever the flow or the pressure in the sublingual sinus is high the tongue is being darted outside and when the pressure decreases the tongue is being retracted inside so that is the phenomenon of the movement of tongue in the case of frog and over here i my figure quality is terrible sorry for that so here we can see there are two what bulging of orbits what bulging of orbits bulging of orbits so the bulging of orbits is again present in what the roof of the mouth what roof of the mouth and so let's say again i am making it very small because i am very confined space over here so what we can see there is what a gullet what gullet like this and there is what glottis so what actually is gullet so as the mouth and the pharynx are being worked they are both fused or they are being conjointed in the case of frog so what actually happens the pharynx so let's say this is the pharynx so the mouth has a common opening for the air as well as the food that is the pharynx so that part of pharynx known as pharyng pharyngeal chiasma now the posterior part of pharynx so let's say this pharynx so posterior part of pharynx is being folded to form a structure like this so widen a structure that is known as what gullet what gullet gullet and gullet continues down to form the food pipe or the esophagus what esophagus and this part is known as what glottis what glottis and glottis will later on form the what the windpipe often it is known as windpipe it will get rise to the larynx and the lungs like this gullet will give rise to what the food pipe continuation to food pipe not give rise to and just adjacent to the gullet there is what the stachian tube what stachian tube so what is stachian tube so stachian tube stachian tube so stachian tube is that tube that connects the mouth with the middle ear so it has a very important functions in maintaining the air pressure so if you have ever travel to the plane you can see you have experienced the air hostess has provided you with chocolates or any thing to eat why it happens so when we ascend on a higher level the atmospheric pressure on the outside is being decreased whereas the our inside pressure the pressure inside our ear continues to remain constant so with respect to outside it is what the inside pressure is increased and pressure always flows from what high to low then the pressure inside will tends to what block the ear drum what block the ear drum but the ear drum is a what tympanic membrane is a type of valve that will only allows the air to come inside but doesn't go outside that's why at that moment what our ear will be just becoming anything a very heavy like that and we cannot hear anything but at the same time if we eat anything not only chocolate even chewing gum even in rice or anything 
the stretching tube is being activated and the pressure inside or the air inside the middle air middle air is being transmitted outside through the mouth so that is the main reason and like all we are what buckloles so called buckloles and we tend to what heat our ears and say what is happening over here so just you have got the remedy just eat anything to get rid of that havoc so this is what stachian tube and this is another what the tube vocal cords what vocal cords so what is the function of vocal cords they acts as the resonators means what they acts as resonators during the breeding seasons and boys had got so many vocal cords very boys not male frogs sorry male frogs now there is what esophagus esophagus below to the gullet is the esophagus that is a continuation of the food pipe and the esophagus will lead to the stomach a stomach will lead to a small intestine a small intestine will lead to the large intestine rectum and rectum will not open into the anus it will open into the cloaca what cloaca cloaca and cloaca is a common opening for both the male as well as female so in the case of female it will receive opening from ureters for the urine as well as ov duct what ov ducts whereas in the case of male it will again receive ureter and it will at the same time it will open <coughs> by the crocal pages and it will receive another what genital ducts what genital ducts what genital duct again for the spermatic duct and this will all the cloaca will open into the trunk of the frog by a what median cloacal aperture so the most important thing you need to remember is about the what the mouth of the frog what mouth of the frog there are the lots of the things that you can remember from here and if you have any feedback or the, about the good or bad things about my video you can frankly tell me on the facebook there's a links below that i was a hyper i have hyperlinked the text of akash biology and you can comment about the topics for which you want the next video and please do like and subscribe for more videos and if you really really want to do something that you have never done in life means want to achieve something or being a doctor just you can imagine your life being a person just winding up on a stethoscope around your neck and wearing a white apron you can imagine how much happy you will be when you are able to succeed your dream with your own effort and you can what everyone can only you need what the right direction to achieve it and a burning desire to achieve that or succeed at that goal whenever you google any of the inspirational stories you can see what everything seems impossible until it is done even for the any of the freedom fight or any of the persons who has done great things there was a barrier but it has become inspirational because they have what cut off that barrier so you can my friend even i simply you are assuming who i am to tell you just i am also a student who has done just done hard work a lot to get my name on the merit list so i can know the problem of a middle class family to just let their dreams go because of the financial problem so if you want to make that dream come true or your parents a proud moment to feel for yourself then you can do hard work and if you have any queries even for motivation or anything then please free to message me on my facebook or my page and i will try to reply as soon as possible thank you stay tuned connected with akash biology